welcome back to Jam Online. It's so good to see you today. I hope you've had a good week. Today, we're talking about the truth that God has chosen you. Yes, you. God loves you and he's chosen you to be his friend. He's chosen you to get to know him. He's chosen you because he loves you. He's chosen you because he wants to show you amazing things and teach you things. Oh, and tell you special stuff because God has chosen you. That's awesome. That's amazing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into too much, we need to do some worship. We need to put God first. And worship is one of the ways that we put God first. So if you'd get up on your feet and follow along with the jam dancers, we're going to do this song called The Stand. And we're going to stand and worship Jesus together. Check this out. You stood before creation Eternity in your hand You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand You stood Everyone, I love that song. I'll stand. 
with arms high and heart abandoned. And oh, I'm the one who gave it all. That's Jesus. He gave everything he had so we could know God and we could know Jesus. So good. Right now, hmm, let's talk to the jam leaders and jam helpers and find out, did they know that God has chosen them too? And when did they become friends with Jesus? That's what we're going to find out about today. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Terry, and this week we are looking at the theme of God Chose You. Uh, so I was saved in the, on the 4th of November in 2012. I was 12 years old, um, but I'd never really understood what it meant to be in a relationship with God before that. Um, I had been going to church um, every Sunday with my family since, we, since I was little, but I never um, kind of understood um, what being in a relationship with God meant. Um, it was in 2012 that I was diagnosed with a severe hearing loss um, and the little things were starting to make sense to me and I started to understand um, what God was offering me and uh, the life he was offering and what that meant. Uh, so I decided in November um, that year that I would give my life over to God uh, and I did. I was baptised um, and yeah, since then... Uh, God's just been working in me uh, continuously. Um, yeah, my relationship with God has grown, keeps growing. He keeps showing me new things, teaching me new things. Um, and best decision of my life. Hi guys, this is Beza here. And today we're talking about God who chooses us. The great thing about that is means we can choose him. Now, when I was five years old, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And where did I do that? I did that in Indonesia. And it was after I went, came back from church one day in this village. Now this church is pretty cool. It had a dirt floor, it had thatched bamboo walls and leaves for its roof. And in that we learned a lot about Jesus. And one day after church, I came back home, my parents talked to me a bit more about it, and I decided to give my life to Christ because God chooses us. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us to save us from our sins. So that we could have a relationship with God and uh, live for Him. So I did that all those years ago and I never had to turn back since. And it's been amazing. So God chooses us. Thanks guys. Hey Jammers, it's Sophie here. I hope you're all going super well. Today I'm going to tell you the story of what happened when I gave my heart to Jesus. So, it was a long time ago. I think I was in grade... It could have been grade three, four or five. I can't remember the actual year that it was, but they were doing baptisms at church and I was watching all my friends get baptized and I just started crying and I went to dad and gave dad a hug and dad was like, are you okay, Soph? And I was like, yeah, like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm crying. And um, so that was the first time that I had actually felt the Holy Spirit for myself because sometimes um, because God's presence is such a supernatural thing sometimes our bodies can respond in different ways so some people cry when they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit not all the time but sometimes and that's me some people fall to the ground or some people shake or just all these amazing responses in response to God's presence which is so awesome but yeah, so I just started crying and dad was like, you okay? And I was like, yeah, like, I don't know why I'm crying. I think like all my friends are getting baptized. I think I want to get baptized too. And dad said, have you given your heart to Jesus? Do you want to give your heart to Jesus? And I said, yes, I give my heart to Jesus. I want to get baptized. I give my heart to Jesus. So that's the earliest memory that I have of when um, I gave my heart to Jesus for the first time. So yeah, that happened. And then I got baptized and I think I still was crying afterwards for a little while. It was a pretty awesome feeling, feeling the Holy Spirit for the first time. I just felt God's love and so much warmth and so much peace. And it was amazing. And what's cool is that when we live with Jesus, we can feel that every day. And we can feel it all the time when we're living in his presence and walking in the plans that he has for us. 
so yeah that's the story of when i first remember giving my life to jesus so yeah thanks jam guys does anyone know what time it is hmm. does anyone know what time it is it's jimmy time what time is it it's jimmy time i wonder what jimmy's thinking about today Hi, I'm Jimmy. I wonder what I'm thinking about today. Did God really choose me? What does the Bible say? Everyone say, God is good. God is good. Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. Mark chapter 10 verse 18. Everyone say, God is great. God is great. Psalm 147 verse 5. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Everyone say, God's ways are right. God's ways are right. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is he. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. Everyone say, God loves me. God loves me. John chapter 16 verse 27 from the Amplified Bible says this. Jesus said, For the Father himself tenderly loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. Everyone say, God chose me. God chose me. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love. John chapter 15 verse 16. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. God did choose me, and God has chosen you too. He wants to be your best friend, so you can be confident in God's love, because he loved you first, and he wants to be your best friend. God did choose you and God has chosen me too. Let's live for Jesus every day of our lives because God chose us first. Thanks, God. See you next time. Thanks, Jimmy. That was so good. Oh, it's really important to know that God loves you and he's chosen you. Now you might think, but I'm too small, or I'm too slow, or I'm too chubby in the middle. But God says, I think you're perfect, and I love you just the way you are. God is so wonderful. He sees every one of us, and he loves us all the same. And he wants us all to be his friends. And that's why Jesus came and died for us, and died to take our sin away, so we could all be friends with God. Because God chooses all of us, and Jesus has made it so we can all come and be friends with God. We just have to believe in Jesus and receive his love and forgiveness. But the first thing you need to know is that God has chosen you and he loves you. And he has the best for you. That's so good. Right now, we've got a Bible story. It's about Peter, one of the disciples, who loved Jesus very much. But he had the time where he made some bad mistakes. But... Jesus reminded him that, that Jesus still loved him and Jesus had still chosen him. Even though he made some mistakes, 
God was, had forgiven him and Jesus forgave him and wanted him to come back and serve him. <gasps> Check this out. The Miracle of Mercy, Peter. This is Peter. Hey, Whoop. Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus and he heard all of his teachings. When the time came for Jesus to die and take away the sins of all the world, Jesus had one final meal with his friends. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What a second. But Peter said, why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, die for me. Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh -oh. But Peter said, even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I Later on that night, Jesus was arrested by men sent by the religious teachers and priests. Peter tried to fight for Jesus and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. Ow. But Jesus healed the guard huh? and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Uh, hello. <gasps> a servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Huh? Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, ma? But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, Didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Then Jesus died and was placed in a tomb. The disciples heard that he had come back from the dead. Peter even saw the empty tomb and believed that Jesus was alive again. And Jesus appeared to the disciples to show him that he was alive. Some of Jesus' followers were together when Peter said, I am going fishing. Okay. So they all went out to the sea, but caught nothing all night. At dawn, they saw a man standing on the beach. Oh, hey, over here. The man called out to them and said, Have you caught any fish? Nope. The man said, Throw out your net on the right side and you'll get some. Uh, okay. So they did, and they couldn't bring in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then one of the men on the boat said to Peter, It's Jesus! When Peter heard that it was Jesus, he swam to the shore while the others pulled in the load to the boat. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Mmm, -hmm, I miss a fish. Got it! 
Jesus said, come have some breakfast. While they were eating, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, you know I love you. So Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked again, do you love me? Peter said again, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then take care of my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. So he said, you know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said one last time, then feed my sheep. And so Peter went on to feed Jesus' sheep by helping establish the church and by writing books that we can now read in the Bible. And though he denied Jesus, he was forgiven. And many came to know the love and forgiveness of Jesus through Peter. Oh, that was such a great Bible story. Peter loved Jesus and he was one of his disciples. And he made some mistakes, but Jesus said he forgave him because he still had chosen him and wanted him to serve him. Did you know sometimes we can muck up and we can make mistakes too? It happens. But because God has chosen us and Jesus has chosen us, we can come and say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And you know what? When we confess our sins to him, the Bible says that he will forgive us because of all the things we've done, if we confess them and he will forgive us and we can receive his forgiveness and get back on track with the things that God wants to do in our lives and through our lives. Because he's chosen me and he's chosen you and Jesus has beaten every sin so there's no sin that can separate us from God's love. Oh, it's so good to live free from sin. And it's so good to know that God has chosen me and God has chosen you and he wants us to live for him. And he's here to help us live for him. <gasps> Thanks for a great day at Jam Online. I want you to remember that God loves you and he's chosen you. And he has special things that he wants to tell you and that he wants you to do just for him. It's amazing to serve God. It's amazing to serve Jesus. And it's amazing to have the Holy Spirit to lead us and help us do everything that God wants us to do. Oh, I'm so glad that I'm a Christian. And I'm so glad that you're a Christian too. That we love Jesus and we're going to live for him. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you really soon again at Jam Online. Bye.
Jesus. 